Good day students, welcome to math.surf.com. In this clip we're going to be going over problem 6 to 10 of the Algebra 1 Common Core New York Region exam for August 2016. If you have any questions at any point in time during this presentation, just place your questions in the comment section below and we'll be more than glad to support you. Alright, let's take a look at question 6. It says the table below shows 6 students overall averages and their averages in their math class. If a linear model is applied to these data, which statement best describes the correlation coefficients? Uh, so we're looking at linear regression right here, okay? So um, the linear regression is, of course, is of the form <clears throat> y equals ax plus b or y equals b plus ax. So linear regression we have y equals ax plus b. Now, when you uh, we're going to have to use our calculators here, all right? So um, when we calculate our linear regression using our calculator, r is our coefficients, um, our correlation coefficients, all right? Correlation coefficient. So this is the value that we're going to be um, paying close attention to. Okay, so there are different calculators, different ways for entering different calculators. So um, I'm going to be using the TI-83 to do this. Okay, so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be entering the first um, row in the first column and then the second row in the second column. Okay, so you're going to press statistics, the stat button and then edit, okay, press enter, and then you have a whole bunch of lists, okay? There's one, two, three, four, on and on and on. Now look at the, consider the overall student average, the row on the top as list number one. Okay, so let's go ahead and enter it. So 92, enter 98, enter 84, enter 80, Enter 75, enter 82, enter. All right, anytime you enter information into a calculator, you always want to double check to make sure everything is correct. Okay, 92, 98, 84, 80, 75, and 82. Perfect. So our first list is the overall student average. Our second list is going to be the math class average. Okay, so let's enter the data. <clears throat> 91. Enter 95, enter 85, enter, we have another 85, 75, and lastly 78. So let's first check. 91, 95, 85, 85, 75, 78. Perfect. Okay, now let's quit. Um, now before you calculate your correlation coefficient, one thing you want to do is you want to turn on your diagnostic, okay? So let's put a side note here. You want to recall. Uh, turn on diagnostic. Turn on diagnostic before computing for computing um, the correlation coefficient, okay? Because if you do not turn on diagnostic, guess what? It's only going to show you the linear model, okay? Um, the linear regression equation. That's all it's going to show you. It's not going to show you um, the R value, okay? So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to go to my catalog and look for diagnostic. Um, so I'm just going to press the letter D to scroll to D, scroll down, diagnostic on. Enter, enter, so diagnostic is now on. Now what we're going to be calculating or determining is a linear regression equation with some more information. Press that, scroll to calculate, okay? On, on the calculate menu, you look for linear regression. Scroll down, 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 option four is linear regression AX plus B. Press enter, enter, bam. There goes the linear regression. It shows you A, B, R squared, and R. That is what we're looking for. R is 0.9248. Okay, so R, oh snap, let me change the color. R 
is equal to 0 0.9248. So what does this tell us? It tells us that the correlation coefficient is close to positive 1. Okay, so um, 0 0.9248, uh, the correlation coefficient, coefficient is close to 1. So that's uh, why our answer is option number 2. All right, let's take a look at question number seven. Uh, it says, what is the solution to the inequality 2h plus 8 greater than 3h minus 6? All right, so one thing you want to keep in mind, so real quick reminder is um, switch the inequality symbol switch the inequality symbol Anytime you, <clears throat> anytime you do what? You switch the inequality symbol anytime you divide or multiply by um, negative one, okay? Anytime you multiply or divide by negative one. That's something you always want to keep in mind, okay? And if you look at the options, you notice that you have the inequality symbols in reverse orientations just to catch you if you forget to switch the orientation upon multiplying or dividing by negative one, all right? So 2h plus 8 is greater than 3h minus 6. That's our um, uh, inequality. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I need the variables on the left side and the numbers on the right. So subtract 3h from both sides of your equation. So that leaves us with what? We have 2 minus 3. Keep the sign of the bigger, okay? So negative h plus 8 is greater than, these add up to 0, minus 6. We then proceed to subtract 8 from both sides. And you have negative h is greater than negative 14. All right. Uh, now we want h isolated, so we're going to divide or multiply both sides by negative 1. We will accomplish the same goal. All right. If we carry out that procedure, what do we get? h is less than 14. What just happened? Whenever you divide by negative one, as indicated in the reminder, you want to switch the orientation of your inequality symbol. That's why we have h as less than 14. The answer to number seven is option number one. Okay, so there goes our final result. All right, let's take a look at uh, question eight. It says, which expression is equivalent to uh, 36x squared minus 100. So one thing you want to remember um, is the formula, this formula right here for difference of squares. So if you have a square minus b square, difference minus of squares, a square and b square, this can be written in the factor form a plus b times a minus b, the sum and the difference of the square. So you root the first, with the last and express them as sum and differences. All right, so let's uh, take a look at this example right here. We have 36x squared minus 100. Now, if you take a look at the options, it shows that there's a possibility that a greatest common factor could be extracted, four or two. So which of these is the biggest number that evenly divides 36 and 100? We know two goes into this two, but does four go? Uh, absolutely, four goes into these two numbers, okay? So what we're going to do is factor out four. When we factor out, is as though we're dividing, okay? So divide this by four, you end up with nine x squared. When you divide 100 by four, you end up with 25. Now, closely examine what you have in this parenthesis. That's 9 is a square, x squared is a square, 25 is a square. You have minus difference of squares. That's what you have here, okay? So how do you factor that? You take the square root of the first term 
and second term and express it as sum and differences, okay? So this now becomes four times square root of nine x squared is three x. So three x plus square root of 25 is five. And then uh, three x minus five, okay? So our answer is going to be option number two. All right, let's take a look at uh, number nine. It says, Patricia is trying to compare the average rainfall in New York to that of Arizona. A comparison, comparison between these two states for the months of July through September will be best measured in. So we are looking at the unit for the quantity of rainfall versus divided by the time, okay? So, we're looking at quantity over time, quantity per time. Now, when you think about rainfall, how is it described when they talk about how much um, rain fell? It's described in inches, right? So quantity for rainfall is inches. That's the unit for measuring um, the amount of rainfall, okay? How about the time? What's the time measurement here? Well, we look at the scenario that's on the consideration. It says for the months, months of July through September. So um, the time measurement is from uh, July to September. We're looking at months here. All right, so the best units for measuring the average rainfall is going to be inches, quantity of rainfall per month, the time unit that's on the consideration in this particular scenario. Okay, so uh, the correct answer is option number three. All right, let's take a look at question 10. It says, which function defines the sequence negative six, negative 10, negative 14, negative 18, and on and on, all right? Where f of six is negative 26. So there are two ways um, to do this. There's a quick way and then there's the longer way. All right, let me show you the quick way real quick, which um, involves using the sixth term, term okay? So method one, And we can just call it a test, okay? We're just going to test which of these equations satisfy this scenario right here where the sixth term is negative 26. So we just plug in six into all of them. Whichever one yields negative 26, that will be our answer, okay? All right, let's start with option number uno. Uh, X equals six. Okay, so we're gonna plug it into this um, function right here. So f of six is going to be uh, negative four times six minus two, all right? So if you work this out, you get negative 24 minus two. Wow, voila, negative 26, right on the money. So this is a nice problem. The first one worked perfectly. So that's, that's our answer, option number one, okay? Now, let me show you another method, okay? This is pretty nice. I don't know if you, you wanna do it. Um, method two involves using the formula for the nth term of, a, of an arithmetic sequence. Method two, nth term formula. Now, you gotta be careful with this one because you have to make sure that um, the sequence that's provided is in fact an arithmetic sequence. And that is the case here because you have a common difference. Okay, from here to here, you minus four. From here to here, you minus four. So you're subtracting the same amount of number over and over again. That is a, an arithmetic sequence scenario, okay? So the formula is a n equals uh, a one plus n minus one times the common difference. In function format, it's gonna be f of x equals the first term, which are, could be considered f of one, depending on where you're starting, plus 
x minus 1 times the common difference. Okay? So all we're going to do is plug in f of 1, the common difference, into this expression and compute what the function is going to be. What is f of 1? f of 1 is the first term of the sequence, which is negative 6. The common difference, we already determined what it is, but if you didn't know, you just say, oh, you know what, a2 minus a1, that's a common difference, negative 10 minus negative 6, which is negative 10 plus 6, and that is uh, negative 4. All right? We now have the two ingredients to generate the function for this sequence. So f of x is now going to be f1, which is negative 6, plus x minus 1 times the common difference of negative 4. All right, so we now simplify that. Uh, we have negative 6. Now we're going to distribute negative 4 to the two terms in the parentheses. All right, so distribute negative 4 to x and then distribute negative 4 to negative 1. So what does that yield? That gives us negative 4x. Be careful here, minus times minus is plus plus 4. Combine like terms, f of x equals negative 4x. Negative 6 and positive 4 are like terms, so they unite to give you negative 2. So ladies and gentlemen, this is a function for the sequence provided above. Okay, and if you take a look at your options, it's consistent with option number one. Okay, so um, this is the final answer. And the nice thing about this method is that you do not need, you don't need this particular value to determine the model. Okay, you just need the sequence and then you just write down the explicit formula for generating the terms of the sequence. Okay, so that's that. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this presentation. We really appreciate it. If you found the contents of this tutorial helpful in your review of the um, New York Regents Algebra 1 exam or the upcoming exam, do give us a thumbs up. Your positive feedback is very valuable to us. Any questions and comments should be placed in the comment section below, and we'll be more than glad to support you. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. We are still going to be adding up the solutions to the remainder of this um tests so stay tuned um more clips and solutions can be found on math.serve.com thanks again for watching and have a wonderful